Good morning, Soul Family. Good afternoon. What's going on in that beautiful night? I'm on your magical mystery ride. And I'm so dizzy, don't know what hit me, but I'll be alright. My head's under water, but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy, and I'm out of my mind. Gotta do this. Cause Give your all to me, I give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning, even when I lose a winner. As I give you all of me, and you give me all. This is a good part. Cards on the table, girls showing hearts. Risking it all, though it's hard. Cause all of you loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges. All your perfect imperfections. Shuffling. To me. I give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I'm winning. Cause I give you all of me. And you give me all of you. That, my soul family, was the song that my twin soul sang to me the last time I saw him. As he held me and rocked me back and forth, I sang it to him, he sang it to me. And I was literally just talking to him, saying, what the hell is going on with you? Like, seriously? This is just getting real old. And I went to start the reading, and that song came on. <laughs> so you guys got to hear that. All right, today we are working with, you know what? I'm going to look above. You're going to choose from some things that are hanging. Okay. You're going to choose from, whoop. Sailboat, sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me. The Tree of Life, the Mermaid, and the Dragonfly. Okay? So, <clears throat> who's going to be who? Uh, come sail away will be... Come sail away, come sail away, come sail away. i got to think about who's going to be that. The Mermaid's going to be... My Pisces moon. The sailboat's going to be air. The tree of life is earth. And the dragonfly is water. So, oops, sorry, let me put my hands over you. I've got to plug my phone in. So, let's start from the, we'll start from the far side. So, air, sailboat. Let me write this down. You know, I'll forget. I've been doing, um, I've been looking at these tiny homes and, and camper remodel mod modifications. Oh God, man, I was up till I can't even tell you what time looking at them. They're so cool. I want to do it. I want to travel across the country. There's so many places I want to go, you know, and I have two cats and I want them to go with me. Tree of life is earth. The mermaid is my Pisces moon. Oh, wait a minute. I said water already, didn't I? I didn't say fire, so I guess that's going to have to be my fire. Damn. Okay. Mermaid is fire. 
is both me. And the dragonfly is water. Okay. And what's funny is, um, <laughs> air is sailboat. As I do this, and then I'll go to look up something, you know, like I get an animal messenger, and I, and I close it out. I'm like, okay, Sherry. Uh, we had a, I got a messenger today while I was outside. I was up really early, actually. I've been cleaning all day. My house is immaculate right now. And I, I was thinking about that as far as tiny homes and, you know, and you know how everybody, if you live in a, mo a motor home, I was watching all these young people, these, actually, they weren't even young people, you know, they were adults. And this one lady lives in her motor home. She got this motor home for $1,800. And then her and her dad worked on it and they decked it out and it's pretty cool. I would have done things a lot different, but she did it on her own and you know, things are probably a lot, they are, they're a lot harder than they look, right? But it was pretty cool for the price that she got. I mean, it's crazy. And my friend Scott, I was talking to him because he is fixing up a motor home for a business, like a mobile business, and he's making himself a container home. So I, I, said, I showed him this thing that I saw and he's like, you know what? There were four motorhomes given away on Craigslist in San Diego this weekend. He says people are getting rid of motorhomes all the time because they don't want to pay to have to park them. People get them, they think they're going to be fun, the family goes once and they hate it. And then they, for the rest of the time they pay for parking. And I said, interesting, you know, in Canyon Lake here we have a motorhome storage parking lot. I know you got to pay, but it's probably less for me because I live here. But anyway, so I'm looking at all these things and I thought to myself, you know, as I cleaned this morning, it's hot in here, right? I don't like it hot. I don't like it hot. I have got my fans running 24-7. 24-7, and I've had my little air conditioner going 24-7 for a month and a half, two months. You know, you couldn't do that in a little motorhome, right? You'd be freaking dying. You'd, you'd be costing you a fortune. And then I'm, I'm vacuuming, and I'm thinking, I want a vacuum. I want at least a dust buster, right? Like a really good stick room. I would want a stick room. You would have to have that. Now... I wouldn't have to have an oven because I would probably want like a flat stove top, right? I used to have one of those corning flat stove tops, but I don't bake anything. I'm a vegetarian and the little things that I make, I make it in a, um, in a skillet, right? And I would want a microwave and somebody, I just heard somebody say, no, what are you talking about? That's not environmentally friendly. That's not even healthy. I know, I know, but I've got this thing. I mean, I don't know. That's one thing I haven't, maybe I'll have to get over that. But I would have to have a refrigerator. Um, one good thing that that girl used, I thought was really cool, is she made a little door with a, a little, uh, and you open it, you can have, it's like a big cupboard door you open up, and then it had a little door front, and that was for her cats. And it went in, and it went to the outside, and that's where the cat box went. So it was completely outside of the living space. I liked that, because my cat box, I have one in here for Lily, and I have one outside um, in the, right outside my door and you know yeah I'm a super neat freak I'm telling you I don't want any scent and I don't like cat hair and litter and so I mean I'd be cleaning constantly and you know in a smaller space it gets dirty faster this place gets dirty quickly it took me about an hour and a half yesterday to catch all my crane flies dragon flies you know and take them outside and now they've got all these webs built again in here so but it's amazing I've got a whole list of ones that I'm gonna watch on YouTube today and my landlord, you know, for the about 400th time, my, the wind came up overnight and broke my, my pretty little umbrella. It's, we've had like five break. So he put this tarp up and I actually like it. It doesn't let the sun in, you know, it, it, I can see, but it doesn't let the heat in. It completely comes across here. And I thought, you know, you could put that, you would, I would want to have one of those tarp things with two poles that would go out, you know, for my motorhome. Anyway, I'm sure you guys probably live in homes and think, why do we care about this? I don't know, you can fast forward if you don't. I just think it's kind of interesting. All right, so we're going to work with, um, well, like I said, we're going to go from, should we go from left to right or right to left? Uh, I don't want to know my cards, but I do know my cards. So what I have to do right now is I'm going to close my eyes. <laughs> I don't like to know ahead of time, and one of the cards flipped up, so... We're going to go from right to left. So we're going to go backwards. We've been going backwards a lot lately. I guess it's Mercury retrograde, right? So here we go. So this is... 
air signs. This is earth signs. This is fire signs. This is water. Okay, I got our four cards. And at this point, I think we're just going to do four cards. I'll see if you guys... <laughs> I was going to say, if you deserve another... Oh, I'm laughing at myself. Okay. All right. I love... I, I'm in love with my little... My little... Uh, what is this thing called? Tripod? I freaking love this thing. I mean, I still... There we go. It takes me a couple seconds to remember which way to turn it. But gosh, I love having free hands, you know? I don't like to be encumbered by things. I'm a free spirit. All right, so we're gonna start with air. Ooh, wow, that's a beautiful message to get. Especially, look where she's at. So, spirit is telling you that right now there is someone, whoever it is that you have been thinking about fondly, has also, and actually is, thinking of you now, at this moment. Goddess of Oneness. This one is in the forest. Every time I look at those birds, they're, they're tropical, they're beautiful birds, those birds, but I always think of them as, as um, the phoenix rising, even though I don't know what they are. They're like a combination of the phoenix and doves, which makes sense, right? Doves are soulmate connections. And doves also are about resurrection or death. And so, uh, I'm taking a breath, pause, gentleness. So there she is out there in the forest. Look at her beautiful hair. And whoever it is that you have been thinking about is sending you loving energy at this moment. And spirit wants, they want you to know that no matter where you are, you might be missing someone. I mean, clearly I was singing to someone I loved, right? And I don't know what's going on. And you know, my dreams were so bizarre last night. I just, God knows what goes on. But we're all being shown that right now, whoever chose this, and I didn't choose any of these, I'll, I choose them all, so they're all me. Someone is thinking of you and sending you their loving thoughts and wishes, right? Now that could be me, I was doing that, right? It's like anything that we think. When I talk to my clients and we're, you know, I, I work with love and relationships all day long, and there's a distance between someone or they're not speaking or they've had a disagreement, um, I said, you know, this one girl said, what, what's going on? And, and she says, he just comes in and out, in and out. And I said, yeah, I know that one. And I got that um, what came up was that, you know, this person is, there's like a competition. Like somebody wants to be right. Somebody wants to win. And she said, I just want to get going. We're just wasting time. And I said, yeah, I understand that. So Spirit said to her, just let it go. You know, if he wants, if he's so consumed with being right, let him be alone with his thoughts and let him see how long it feels good to be a, the winner, right? You can be a winner all by yourself. I said, but, and, she, and I said, but the guy loves you. It's very clear that he loves you. So what you can do, I said, send your, you know, she kind of started to laugh. And I said, he's got fear-based thoughts. And I said, and he kind of turns it around and he turns it into anger and control. He wants to control you because he's trying to control his feelings and he can't. So he's doing it by silence. People do that, it's passive aggressive behavior. So, but he does love you and this is gonna come together and the best way for it to happen is to keep your heart open, right? You know what's going on with him, he's gotta work through his issues, but you know, you can speed it up by keeping a positive attitude. So, send him your loving thoughts. And I said, talk to him out loud. Like, some, like what's happening here? It's like sending out, it's vibrational, it's energy. And whether they hear you, some people do. I can hear things being said sometimes, right? But maybe if they don't hear you, they, can, they, will, they will get that energy. They'll just suddenly feel better or the, the, the atmosphere around them will feel more relaxed. The, their tension will kind of go away. They might have a, a thought of you because everything is sent out like radio waves, broadcast, right? <clears throat> now, it goes out in all ways. You can be sitting here angry and frustrated and, and stomping around the room and saying, wah, 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 and you know, and that energy goes out too. And like I've said before, you gotta be careful because we manifest what we send out and let go of, right? So if you're all pissed off and you're ranching around and you send that off and then you just kind of like forget about it and go on with your day, you get over it, whatever, you are manifesting that. 
And people always say it's such a ripoff. Okay, well, I get mad and I send that out and here I've been loving and waiting and this and that and the other for all these months and years and I'm gonna manifest the worst? Well, it's because you let go of it, you detached. So if you do rant and rave and get upset, you know, when you're, you know, because we all do, a song can piss you off, right? That song started speaking to me. But right before, earlier today, there was a song that was really, really negative. You know, that trust fund baby. I like that you're broken, you're broken like me. Or the one, um, you're gone, so I gotta, say hi, I gotta stay high to keep you off my mind. And you know, I can't go home alone tonight. I gotta bring someone else to keep me. And I'm thinking, wow, really? You can't be alone? You love me and you, you can't be with me, so you're gonna bring somebody else home to bed with you because you, you gotta keep it off your mind? So you hear stuff like that, and all of a sudden your energy flips and goes the other way, right? So here's a lesson for men. Because women know this. Here's a lesson for men out there. You wonder why you're energetically, it goes up and down? It's because of stuff like that. If we don't know what's going on with you, and we get information or things come across, it affects you emotionally, what you hear, right? So if you're all mad and, and you send something out and then you calm down, save. Cancel, clear, delete. You know, I delete that, what I said. I was upset, I take it back. It's, you know, I wanna remove that energy from being sent out there. Cut it, cut the cords. And then actually that would be a really good thing to do is cut cords. Cut cords with the one that you love, cut cords with anyone. You never cut cords of love, it's only dysfunctional energy. So we can send information out that way and we can receive information that way. As an example, when I was with my spiritual twin, I left the radio on, I've spoken about this before, because I wasn't quite sure what was going on with us, right? Our, our feelings, I wasn't saying what I was feeling, and he wasn't saying what he was feeling, and so I was shown by spirit, leave the radio on. And, and I could tell by the songs that were playing what was going on, and then I knew how to behave. I knew how, when he was feeling uncomfortable, I knew when he was feeling more comfortable. Songs can speak to you. And so our thoughts, our feelings, everything that goes out, it's, it's energetic airwaves. You can get messages from, from someone you love if that's an agreement. I made an agreement with that with my twin in spirit. I don't even know if he consciously is aware of that, but that happens. So also, it's about ones who have passed away. Now think about this. This is a subject that you and I are still debating because I've been getting a lot of lo a lot of signs actually because the question was when somebody passes back into spirit do they consciously recall their life here and are they that particular spirit person communicating with us and I have been getting messages that are confirming that I'm getting messages from my mother so this is another sign that someone that you have been thinking about is sending energy to you it could be someone that has passed into spirit and you've been feeling a loss of them you've been missing them so this is to let you know that they love you and that their energy is always there talk to them I talk to my mom out loud I ask her questions I want her and sometimes you know what sometimes I don't say things out loud because I actually don't want negative energy to hear that and twist it because sometimes people can zoom in right if you don't have your boundaries up if you don't have your shields a uh, protection up <clears throat> and you are open it's it's just like this see my computer i cover that because that's an eye to the world everybody can see in just like a television i always cover my television screen with a cloth it's never open because those are windows windows in and people that know how to remote view come in these freaking cameras like right now, you know, I put my finger over, over this and I can't take a picture. They, they, they set things up on these cameras, but I just got a message from one of my clients and, uh, hold on, somebody wants a reading. Yes, in an hour, hold on. And she is, what she makes is webcam covers. <laughs> so it's gonna protect that. So. Sometimes I don't say things out loud. If I'm very, very tired, if I'm feeling kind of like I've been getting messages from spirit that, you know, your boundaries are, have been infiltrated or, you know, you've got your, you're weak right now, you're tired, you're run down, so you need to protect your borders a little more. So then I just speak it in my heart and in my head. So 
basically what you the message is that you need to know the best message and the most positive message is there is someone thinking of you and sending you loving thoughts hold on to that so if you've been if you maybe were feeling that you've been missing someone you've been I you know sad about the distance and you were asking specifically about you know are they thinking about me do they miss me and the message is yes very much they want to make their presence known. They want you to know, I haven't forgotten about you. You're important to me. Maybe there's somebody that's away for business. You know, you're missing your husband or your, your partner, or your wife or whoever it is, boyfriend, girlfriend. They're telling you that I haven't left you and I'm not gonna leave you. And energetically, I want you to know my love is wrapped all around you. We are forever connected. No matter where we go, what we do, no matter how many miles are between us, I'm forever spiritually connected to you. We are always spiritually connected to the ones that we love. So that's a beautiful message. At 21 minutes, we go to earth signs. Wow. Ecstasy, yielding, rapture, bliss. 27. How interesting. Two and seven is nine. So that's a nice message. <laughs> yeah, I just started singing all of me loves all. I started this whole thing with all of me loves all of you. And when he came that day, he said, let's get you to the next, let's get you to your next level of bliss. <laughs> That's why he was there. How funny. So right now, what's going on about this? This is actually a really cool message. I like the green butterflies. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight butterflies. Infinity. Infinitely connected. I like that. Forever. It's the forever symbol, right? The infinity symbol. So we, we talk about giving up your free will to someone, right? I just spoke about how this, that one person in my, with my client, he, he was trying to control things, right? He had a problem. He was afraid to show his feelings. And even though he loved her, he was trying to control his own emotions. And he was trying to control the situation by slowing things down, by not speaking to her. He was trying to get her attention. What he wanted was to her. He wanted her to contact him. But it's, you know, he's in and out and he was just playing cat and mouse. And, and so we don't like that. We don't want to be dominated by someone else, right? This is supposed to be a partnership. You don't want to play games. And you don't want to constantly be the one that's a doormat or yielding to another person, right? It's not respectful. And then some people get really, really tired of always having to put the effort in. Why does it always have to be me? They get to the point where I'm, we're just going to stop. Pretty soon you just stop. You know, I keep reaching out, reaching out, reaching out to someone and I never get responses and never hear back. And finally, it's like, you know what? For, forget it. Why am I doing this? Why am I wasting my energy on this? I'm not going to. So you see this one here and there's all of this energy, all of these, this transformation. The color of the butterflies is green, which is love and healing. She looks a little bit blue. Everything's very blue in this, you know, don't you think? She's a little bit unsure. So what's going on right now is there are people that you want to yield to, you want to submit to, you want to give yourself up to, you want to allow them to take control over you and even over your body. It pleases you. You're in love with them. It feels good to have somebody be powerful and you to be taken care of or yielding to them. It's, it's an amazing feeling. They want to please you at the same time. So it's like a give and take. It's beautiful. That's a very deep, deep, relaxing submission. When you are yielding to that, rap, that rapture and that bliss, who doesn't want that? I love that. Some people don't. Some people will just want to struggle. I told you the other day, some people like to fight. They like to fight so they can make up. They want to control each other. I don't, I don't, you know, it, it, there's a difference between allowing someone to be dominant and you to be submitting to them, but you take turns. My twin and I took turns. We'd flip. It was, it was fun. It felt good. It feels good to be dominated by somebody in a loving way when somebody wants to, to bring you pleasure and care for you right? They want to please you. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want to beat you. This is falling so deeply and passionately in love that 
their kiss and their touch, you just want to completely surrender. That's a beautiful feeling. It's also about surrendering to spirit, right? That's what I said. Forget it. I surrender. Whatever it is, just you deal with it. I've tried and tried and tried. I've done everything I can and I'm just exhausted by it. So at this point, I throw my hands up in the air and you figure it out, right? When spirit says to us, you've been trying too hard, you've been working so hard, just allow it to go. We'll take care of you, right? They did that with me with my work. You're working too hard. You need to stop. And I'm like, okay, my bank account's getting lower and lower and lower. I realize I need to stop, but, and I am tired and my energy was, was drawn and I hadn't gone on my vacation like I was told to go. It just didn't work out for some strange reason. But spirit, but I, but I listened to spirit and I said to my landlord yesterday, he was complaining, you know, it's been really slow at work. I said, I think it's just the time period. It was like this last year at this time. You know, you got to remember. I remember that with my ex-husband. He used to panic every year at the same time. And I would say, every year you do this, Every year you know that this is gonna be the slow period. Don't throw yourself into a tailspin. There's money in the bank, you're okay. It's gonna pick up again, but every single time it happened, it would be this, because he had issues with depression anyway. It would be absolute terrifying. I've gotten to the place where I'm looking at my bank account and I'm going, okay. <laughs> and remember, I, you guys, we were talking the other day and I said to Spirit, look, I work for you, right? You work for me, let's, let's get this together here. Can we bring this in? Thank you. <laughs> And what happened just now, you know, Sherry, do you have time for a reading? Absolutely. So, you know, and, and sometimes you're, 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 you're just going to be helped along to, to the next place. And, you know, sometimes there's a reason for that. Sometimes spirit gives us enough just to keep us afloat because they don't want us to go somewhere. Like if I had more money, I'd probably buy a plane ticket and go home to Wisconsin. Right now, for some reason, I'm not meant to do that. So spirit's not going to give me enough money that I can comfortably be responsible enough, pay for have my bills, my ticket, and have money in reserve, right? I, I always have to be responsible. They know that about me. So I'm, I'm given enough to keep myself afloat, bills are covered, I'm good, but not enough to leave this place, which I think is funny. They know what's coming around the corner and I don't. So I, I surrender to spirit. So when sir, a spirit says to take care of us, and that they're gonna take care of us and we're not to worry, whatever it is, you're worried about work, you're worried about a relationship, you're worried about your health, whatever it is you've been straining about, spirit says surrender. This is yielding to spirit's power also. It's a higher power of, of whatever choosing you're talking about at this moment. So for me right now, I'm not in a relationship, right? I'm in a twin soul relationship in the spiritual, but not in the physical. We are not in each other's lives physically at all. Just to put that out there clear, clearly, this is a spiritual union. <clears throat> so I'm by myself. So there's no rapture and bliss, you know, sexual encounters with anybody other than myself. So for me, my surrender is to spirit. What is it for you? Now, you can have an issue with this, a real problem with this. As I, as I showed you, the number two and seven is nine, which we keep getting. Get to work, light worker. You have enough. You're ready. Whatever it is that you're trying to do or wanting to move forward with, you don't need to do any more. You're procrastinating. Stop, right? Whatever it is, you have enough to do what you need to do. So I was thinking today, I think I'm think i thinking about packing up my car and going up into the trees. I've got enough to do that, you know? So if you have a problem with this, you're afraid of losing yourself. Some people want love in their lives so badly, but they're afraid that they're gonna lose their identity. They won't have their freedom. They won't be able to do this or do that or the other, right? Maybe they've been single their whole life or maybe they've been in a relationship where they were controlled or maybe they family controlled them. And the last thing they want is to have somebody else control them, right? I don't want somebody telling me what to do and how to do it. I would lovingly, happily, I would have happily been with my twin and compromised and made agreements. But that's when you're with somebody who has the same mindset and you have the same likes and dislikes and that's something you have to get to know about someone, right? But sometimes people are really, really frightened by that and that's a curse that you will not allow yourself to submit. You won't allow yourself to give in. That you're like that guy and that girl where there's this competition, right? This, this competition about who has to be right. Why can't you both be right? Everybody has their own opinion even if you are in a relationship where you love each other. No one is gonna always see things the same way. So don't feel like you're gonna lose yourself. If you're in a relationship with somebody who takes from you and, and tries to control you, you're, get out of it. 
that's not the place for you to be. Right? But you won't ever experience that rapture, that bliss, that ecstasy, that beautiful feeling of allowing yourself to fully submit and relax and know that you're safe to open yourself and be completely vulnerable if you keep your heart so closed that you have to control it. So there is power in surrender as well, right? You get to choose to do that. This is also, this is powerful for you in your life when you do surrender to spirit, when spirit asks us to, because they work with us and for us. I surrendered, which allowed me to relax, not stress, not worry, have a nap, take it easy, recover my energy, and then I wake up today and start my reading and someone's calling in for a reading, right? I prefer to do private readings than my website. My website is very stressful. It's very negative energy on that website. When my private clients call, it's, I love doing private readings. They're amazing. So when you are able to submit to another or to spirit, it's a relief and it's, and it's satisfaction of knowing that you're, that you're going to be taken care of. You can relax. It's, you know, it's, it's like stress re removed from you. And then in a relationship, it's pleasure and bliss but you have to be very careful about who you allow yourself to submit to you don't want to be with somebody who's going to be manipulating you somebody who wants to control you and sometimes you've got to go through that in order to find out that was a teacher right I said to my twin something one day I gotta tell you it's funny my mom spoiled my my uh, my son he was the first grandchild and he was like the perfect child he was and she used to call him master Devin and she would give him a little bell and put it next to his bed when he would go to sleep in, in the little guest room and she said if you get scared or if you need anything you just ring you ring the bell and Nama will come so <laughs> master Devin so one day I was I was that think I was in Sedona and we were writing back and forth emailing back and forth he was at work my twin and I said Oh, I can't say his name, although I have said it before. I shouldn't do that. Um, yeah, he wrote me back and I said, well, hello, master. And I gave him his name and he said, ooh, I like that. Am I your master? And I said, no, no man is my master. I think it's sexy. I use it when I want to. And he said, I'm, okay, I'm, I, I understand that. I'm good at that. <laughs> so I used to call him that, master and his name. I think it's cool. I like it. But it's because I choose that, not because the guy's got a whip and he's going to tell me what to do, right? So think about what, how this applies to you in your life. So at 33 minutes, we go to fire signs. Wow. Now there you go. Wow. Now this is the carnivorous fairy. A tempting offer has a very high price. So something that you want is going to come to you. It wouldn't be tempting if you didn't want it, right? You're tempted to do this. But if you do it, there's a high price to pay. It may seem, it may come to you in the form of a person. Like see this pretty little girl, right? Oh, I'm just a beautiful little girl. I wouldn't hurt you. But she's a Venus flytrap. She's a man eater. Be careful of that. Sometimes... People come across very innocent and they are not. I've had a couple things that flashed in my mind right now. I told you about someone who keeps wanting to come back into my life and I'm keeping them at an arm's distance. And they have something that I want. And something I really want. Something that I've lost that I can't get from anyone else. And they're asking me to meet them. They're asking me and, and I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do it. So if it isn't something that I can have sent over the internet, I'm not going to do it. Also, I was talking to you about going camping, right? Somebody might want to go with me. I thought to myself, you know, maybe we could go in two different cars. I, I'll fix my car up like a, a little room and he can have his as the, the same. That might be something that might have a price to pay. You don't want to cross a line, right? I'm, I have borders that are very strong as far as relationships go and I'm not open to this for that to be anything more than a friendship. So you gotta think about that. There could be something that you really want. But if you fall into that, 
the price that you're going to have to pay would be more than you're going to want to pay. Now this could be a job offer, right? Somebody asked me if I would sell a product on my page. I, I want to sell the product. I, I think it's, I would love to supply it. I think it's a really good thing, but I keep hesitating. There's a reason for it, right? There might be a price that I don't want to pay. I don't necessarily want to get aligned with a company, you know, a big company. I don't know. So you got to think about the different things. What is tempting you at this time? <clears throat> it could be a lesson. It could be a person. It could be someone. You've already experienced what this person is. I told you about how somebody else that got married that was somebody I cut out of my life, right? Do I want to go back there again? You got to be careful. It's one thing to forgive and move on and keep things pleasant, but do you want to go back there and revisit that? So you have to ask yourself, someone or something that you find attractive is actually dangerous. It could be somebody who feeds off of your energy. This could be, you think about people, watch them. Are these people who take, take, take and never give back? Do they ignore your, your needs and your feelings? Is it all about them? Like that guy who, you know, wants that girl's attention. I just want you, you just want my attention. It's like that song. I think it's Charlie Puth. You've been calling all, uh, calling all around, asking all about me. Uh, you, going to every party because you knew I would be there. Obviously, this is someone that was with this person at one time, right? But I know you don't want me. You just want my attention. You just don't want me with someone else. You really don't care about me. You just want to control me. That's a narcissist, right? So they want your attention. They want, they'll hook you and get you back there again, but not because they, they want to go anywhere with you, because they want your attention. They like people following them. Or they like to control people. It's a sickness. It's actually a weakness of their own. So watch people who are domineering, who like to control people, who criticize people, who judge people, because those people are dream eaters. Also, people who speak in nasty ways about other people, people who lie. If someone is going to lie to someone else and you know about it, they're going to lie to you. Don't, don't be ridiculous and think that they won't. And if they're going to talk shit behind someone else's back, they're going to talk shit behind your back. It's toxic energy. Think about people who think the whole world owes them a living, right? They're professional sick people the ones who can't take care of themselves, except for they were doing just fine until you came along. Remember the one in my dream I heard the other night? They only show up when it's party time. Do they ever invite you any other time? No, they wanna get into the special places that you can get them into. They want you to pay for their drinks. And, it's, and they only call you when the other friends aren't around. Think about that. People that feel that they're entitled to fame or, my, or money, right? They came into this world feeling that the world owes them a living. They want attention, they crave it, but they don't do anything to get it. They wanna ride on the coattails of somebody else. They think they're royalty. Remember I said in my dream the other night, there was somebody that everyone was treating like royalty. And I, I said in my dream, well, that person's had a rough life. Tough shit, we've all had a rough life. I watched it again last night in my dream. There were two women and there was somebody that was sick and there was this person that was, you know, oh, you can't take the car, why? There's no gas in it. Why is there no gas in it? You know, they take your car, they, they don't fill it up. You're, you're, this person was going to the bank and somebody was getting um, implants. Um, I don't know if they were breast implants or hair implants. I think they were hair implants. And yet they didn't have, they didn't refill the gas back on, into the car. Somebody else was taking care of these people I was watching and I was just like, what is wrong with you? You know, people feel, and, and is that because you maybe you feel like you like being a martyr? You like being the savior? Because that's really lacking in security, right? So people can be very charming when they want you to do something for them. But where are they if you ever need them? Like I said, that person that threw me under the bus over and over again, the one that I cut out of my life, the one that just got married, who was there to help her move? Any of her other people? No one. I was. And guess what? Her shoulder was hurting. So guess who moved everything up three stories? I did. All of it. Cleaned, moved. I do things because I want to help. But when it comes down to it being time for you to need some help, maybe you just need to call somebody and you need to hear from them. And they don't respond. Every time you call me, I answer. Or if I can't answer, I make sure and I call you back. 
But if I text you or, and, I, and I ask for something, you never respond. Okay, well then that's your problem. This is your lesson to learn, right? How many times do you need to learn this lesson? <clears throat> These ones are feeding off of you. They're narcissistic. You're a source for whatever they want or whatever they need. You're the mark. And it's really sad. But it's really sad if you know this and you will continue to allow this to happen. So this is a dangerous alliance. If you need to learn this lesson again, enjoy. Hopefully it'll be your last time because you are their science experiment. And they will continue to take from you again and again and again. That's their very nature. And at, I'm glad that wasn't, God, that was my message, wasn't it? Yeah, so I've got a few people I gotta think about right now. And I've, a few popped into my mind. So now we are at water signs at 41 minutes. Tiger angel. How interesting, as soon as I said that, Lily started crying in the window. Look how clean the house is. Everything's all clean. Yeah. Tiger angel. Okay. Walk gently in your wild ways. <laughs> Tiger angel. The number four. The number four speaks about angels. There are angels all around you. You are completely guided, protected, and loved, and there's no reason for fear. You can see here the halo above this tiger, right? But who's the angel? Is the tiger an angel? Or she's the angel over the tiger because look, she's blowing that energy over that tiger's head. It might be both. They might be both. Spirit says you have the ability. To me, I'm looking at a big cat. That's like Liger, right? That cat is snuggling up into her neck, feels safe with her, loved with her. And you know what she's doing? She's sending healing Reiki energy into this animal. She's holding this animal and she's calling energy in. And right now the spirit says, the universe, the world needs you. People need you. Animals need you. They need your love. They need your devotion. They need your kindness, your protection. This tiger protects her and she sends loving energy into that tiger. There's healing here. He's gentle with her and she's gentle with him. And we all wonder if we have something that we can bring to this world. Am I, is there, I mean, what do I have to offer? We all have something to offer, all of us. Even when we're struggling in our own lives, there's something that we have to offer. We have something positive that we can contribute. This girl, she has empathy and love, and she's a healer. And that tiger, he's strong and powerful and is a protector. Right now, Spirit is saying, I love this because Spirit is saying right now, you have an invisible influence. You are able to influence others without being controlling, without being domineering, without being brutal and nasty. You are able to send out loving influence to others by your example that you set. You're not telling others what they have to do or how to, be, to do certain things, but you can do what I do. I don't see my spiritual twin weak. No matter what I'm shown, I don't see him weak. I see him in his strongest power. I don't see my family weak. I see them strong. It doesn't do anybody any good for us to see somebody struggling, even if they are. We know that we're all spiritual creatures and we all have the ability. That's why I say over and over again, you can do anything you set your mind to. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Can is the word, the operative word. I can do anything I set my mind to. I say to spirit, I work for you. These readings that I do all day long, every day, these are done free of charge. All the work on Facebook, I, I'm on YouTube, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Google Plus, I'm on Instagram. It's all time that I spend freely for spirit. So I work for spirit. So I expect spirit to work for me. So I can manifest the money that I need, the shelter that I need, and the love I deserve, right? Because I give, I deserve that back. I can manifest that, and I do. Now, the, the key word, as I said, is can, because you gotta do something about it. You can have gifts, you can have even a beautiful personality, but if you don't share your love, if you don't use your healing energy, if you don't see the people in your life strong and powerful and surrounded with healing energy, if you don't look at the crystals of the earth and say, you know what, that barrel crystal, hmm, we were talking about that. 
That helps with people that have attention deficit. That helps with people who feel, you know what, I'm gonna tell you, because it's it came up for a reason. Barrel crystal. I, I, it's, it's, it's actually aquamarine. <laughs> But this particular crystal, and, and it's come to me so many times that I have to have this stone. I haven't gotten one yet because I want a beautiful one. I want the specific color. There's pink, there's blue, there's aquamarine, there's different ones. I want the deep green aquamarine. That's the one, the ocean color. So we're speaking about water signs here. This is called the water of the sea because of its seawater color. I'm going to show it to you. I went um, and looked at different ones and, and I was showing, oh, well, there's this one. We have this one. No, I don't want that one. It has to be this color, this particular color. Because Morganite is pink, works with the heart chakra. Green, of course, does as well. But the aquamarine, the barrel, it does the things that I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to try. Here it is. That's the color I need. It's not emerald green. It's almost like a turquoisey. There's more green than turquoise in it, but it's a very, very rich color. If you guys could see it, I'll do it down here. See? It's beautiful. It's more emerald than it is blue, but it's, but it's not emerald. And emerald is a barrel crystal. So this aquamarine, the water of the sea, it's more watery color, channels energy. It's for people who travel, keeps them protected, right, from harm. Anyone who travels over land, but mostly over water. But think about... If it protects you when you travel over water, it would protect you with your emotional water, right? It clears and aligns the throat chakra, so it helps you with communication, but not only with ourselves, but with others. It helps communication blockages, helps you verbally express. It strengthens your immune system, your lymph glands. People who suffer with ADHD and need to concentrate and they need to block out distractions, sometimes we're distracted by outside energy, right? It strengthens anything to do with your head area, nose, mouth, ears, lungs, taste buds. It, it, is, um, it strengthens the bodies and it cleanses your organs, your eyes, your jaws, your, your jaw, your teeth. So for me, my eyes and my teeth are, are very weak, so I want that. Breathing, if you have allergies. It um, works with your thyroid gland, hormones. It's for eyes, as I said, if you've got short -sighted, a short sightedness or whatever the other one is. It, if you have an overactive immune system, it helps reduce stress and it calms your mind. It filters out and clarifies things so that your perception is sharpened and your, it clears up any confusion that you might have. But any blocked communication or self-expression, understanding emotional um, states and, and, and really figuring out why do I feel this way? What am I feeling right now? Like that guy who loves that girl desperately but doesn't contact her, why? Because he's trying to control things. Why are you doing that? What's going on? It soothes fears and increases the sensitivity. It's for highly sensitive people. That's why I want it. I, I, I mean, I want this stone, definitely. It helps you also, for me, for my work, it helps you tolerate other people and their energies. If anyone's overwhelmed by responsibility, it helps you with that and it helps you to take responsibility for yourself. Helps you be persistent and dynamic. And if you have any old patterns, thought patterns, belief systems, self-defeating programming, like say that man that loves that girl, right? Clearly he grew up either in, a, in, a, in an area where he didn't understand love or was abused in, in relationships where there should have been love because he felt defeated and he felt like he needed now to control. And that's the situation where an abused person can become the abuser. They can turn into a narcissist. People that were raised by narcissistic families or a narcissistic brother or sister they can become that themselves because they feel like they want to protect themselves. So this is about breaking self-defeating programs because that doesn't help you, right? That's not going to help anything. Helps you in meditation. I mean, this, this stone is amazing. Now, why did that come up? That came up for a reason. Um, working with the crystals of the earth. I know that crystal is going to be really, really helpful. And I can see a couple of people, few people that really need that. So I know that energy. I told it to you because you may not need to, to send that energy to someone else. What I do is I visualize that person being literally dipped into a vat. Hi, Lily, want me to dip you into that? Like a vat. 
Yes? You want me to dip you into a vat? She says, no, I want you to let me outside. Now I put the barrel crystal away. I, as I sit here and talk to you guys, I just start shuffling and shuffle my cards. But I imagine that. We, we want to imagine people that we love strong. Okay, go outside. We want them, we know that they have the ability to do anything they set their minds to, just like we do. So you don't have to be a Reiki master, right? I'm a Reiki master, you don't have to be. You can visualize this crystal, right? And you can imagine, just like I do, imagine this is the person that you love. And you, this is what I do. I, I literally do this with this card. And I put them down inside that. And I imagine their entire body is completely encapsulated inside this barrel crystal. That's their shield. And then they take on the energy of that crystal. That's just one, but that came up today for a reason. That's important, especially since we're dealing with water signs. It's also reminding me that I want that. I want that crystal in my hands. I want to have it. That color is all about love and it's all about healing. So while all of that healing is going on that you, that you heard about, it helps you release karmic um, and emotional trauma, right? I mean, amazing the stuff that it does, but it's also the color of love. So you can do that. You can send that out to someone. This one is no doubt thinking many different things, helping this tiger. This tiger who, yes, is very powerful, very strong, but might be traumatized. May, maybe needs to learn how to love, needs to learn how to be gentle. She's teaching that, right? So they're telling you, spirit's telling you, you have an influence. It's invisible because you're not even, you don't even have to be in their physical presence to do this. I have an invisible influence by teaching like this. You're not looking at my face, but I'm speaking. I'm giving you spirit's messages and the messages that come to me from my experience, right? My intuition that are picking up on certain things that need to be spoken about. And that goes out. I'm not telling you how to, what to do and how to do it and who you're going to do this with. I'm giving you suggestions. You can adopt this. You can use other things. You can choose to see somebody surrounded in, in, in rose quartz, which is the greatest, greatest love stone, right? Love heals everything and everyone. So right now, if you're wondering, is there, you know, I, you don't feel that you have anything that you can do to be of a powerful influence. Yes, you can without even being present with your family, with your friends, with the situation, your coworkers. I've told you about how I've done that with a coworker. Didn't like me. I had to work with this person. It was awful. I just sat behind them and just said, I love you, named them, didn't love them. Took them a long time till I figured out that, you know, I started to feel that energy. And once you start sending positive energy out, you can shift another person's energy without them even being aware of what's going on. You have changed the dynamics. So recognize that every being loves to be deserved. I mean, loves to be deserved. Loves, deserves to be loved. It's funny I do that. Sometimes I, it's like I'm dyslexic. I, I'll write a word backwards and I'll say words backwards. Isn't that weird? Um, we all deserve that. We all, and we all want to be loved. No matter what anybody will tell you, everybody wants to be appreciated, loved, respected, and to feel safe. Even if you are a big burly person, right? Big strong man. Sometimes we, they don't feel safe. And sometimes when people don't feel safe, they lash out and they act mean, but it's really out of fear and they don't want you to know that. So be a loving, calming influence. Allow that energy to go out. And when you send that energy out, you, you, that comes back to you. It's, my heart chakra is moving very quickly right now. It's spinning. It's affecting me as well. So whatever you can do to bring this into your life, you've got that bright light shining within you. We all have this ability. Spirit has given us all gifts and we're not supposed to keep those gifts in a box on a shelf. We're supposed to use them. I'm a tiger angel. I'm wild and I'm divine. I'm protected and I can protect. I am loved and I am love. I am guided and I guide through unconditional love now and always. Say that. Make up your own little. Make up your own little word. I have a wild card, apparently. Um, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. So, this is for everyone. It's from the Fairy Oracle. I brought all these decks out for a reason. So, this will be for all of us which means I get five because <laughs> they're all for me. 
I like taking them all on. Okay, correct for neutrality on all levels. What is the most appropriate message for everyone that will help the most people at this time? This is a reverse deck, which means, and there are there is a butting heads right now. There is an issue right now where somebody's butting heads. It's it, There needs to be some kind of a compromise. You know, agree to disagree even. Just get to the place where you're, you're not. Wow. Here's the problem. The acorn's invitation. Touch, exchange, connection. That's interesting. We were speaking about someone who loved somebody but didn't want to allow them near them. 17. 1 and 7 is 8. Again, infinite supply. Now, if you were... Well, we're not even going to talk about this in the upright because we're not getting it. What's, what, what happens is the acorn man, this is somebody who wants to... This is, this is the... This is the green man of the forest, the acorn man. This is who I am waiting for, right? This is who the only one I will accept into my life. This is somebody who wants to love and touch and carry, wants to, remember when we were the beginning, how the, the feeling about wanting to submit to somebody who wants to love you and treat you, this is the one who wants to do it. This is somebody who wants to teach you that they, you should be held. You should be, have a massage. You should look lovingly into another's eyes. You should allow a comforting touch to soothe you, to cure you, to make you feel that incredible rapturous bliss. It's a mutual act. This is not talking about sexual abuse. This is not talking about inappropriate behavior. This is an exchange, a loving exchange, a hug, a kiss, a touch, a look. There's no shame in this. There's no embarrassment in this. This is mutual loving energy. This is also speaking about a beautiful man, Robin Hood. He has a very healthy sexual appetite. This is the green man of the forest. A true loving man who respects and loves this woman is devoted to her, wants to care for, massage, love making that's who the acorn man is in the upright in the reverse this is feeling untouched this is craving physical touch sensuality starved for attention a mistrust of being touched or allowing your emotions to be shown or letting anyone near you a dislike of others touching you feeling un uncertain of who you should allow to touch you or who to touch or how to touch yeah, but when I did that, you got upset with me. This is something you need to talk about. There's misunderstandings sometimes can happen between people. That happened between my twin and I. It was beautiful, and then something happened and it went sideways. It didn't mean he was bad. It meant we needed to talk about things. But there could be, wow, I just saw something really beautiful. I just saw three doves go by, but they, had, they were the morning doves, you know, with kind of the gray and the light. And then one completely pure white one. Wow, four. It's beautiful. That was beautiful to see. So this here is hesitating to allow this into your life or to go there. This is about feeling bad about your own personal body. I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to look at me. I feel bad. I've got cellulite. I've got fat around my waist. I've got wrinkles on my face. I don't look like them. I don't look like your last girlfriend. I don't look like the person you left me for. I'm older than them. Now I'm insecure. Now I don't want you to touch me. Wow. That needs to be healed. My body and I are working together in the gym. And I, I just looked at myself yesterday and I thought, what the hell? Why, do I, why is my stomach so heavy? I have had a hysterectomy many years ago an emergency hysterectomy, but if I'm around anyone who, uh, a female, my body reacts to their feminine cycle. So somebody will have their period, I gain five to seven pounds of water weight. It happens. It's annoying as hell, it really is. But I'm thinking to myself, nah, I'm working, I've been working out a lot, so why, why am I feeling like a chunky monkey right now? This is ridiculous, I thought I'd lost all this weight, and I've packed on this weight, it's really weird. I don't know what's going on, something bizarre right? But I'm not going to be mad and shame my body. I'm doing my sit-ups. I'm watching. I thought, okay, I got to be more careful about what I'm eating right now then, you know? I got to get a little bit more active. I went in the gym a couple times yesterday. I'm not going to shame my body. 
and be mad at my body because my body works with me. We're a team. Just like I work for spirit, spirit works for me. So for you, what is it? You need to find out what it is that's holding you back. Maybe you feel like something's dirty. You were taught that that was dirty, that that was wrong. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. You were not to masturbate. It was a sin. Well, I have been single for 11 and a half years, almost 12 years. And if I didn't, I had a short period of time when I, would, I did, was with Tony, very short. I was with my twin, very, very short amount of time, and he was gone. So I primarily have been alone, and I don't sleep with people. I don't let people touch my body. It's sacred. So to me, it's not about being afraid to allow someone to touch my body. It's sacred to me. And I, that's why that song that I, I told you I list, that came on, that, I, I hated that. You know, I'm alone. I don't want to go, I don't want to go, go alone, be alone tonight. So I'm bringing someone else home. I woke up with a martyr in my bed. She keeps me from feeling alone. Wow. That is not someone I want to be with. Because to me, my body is sacred and no one touches it. Except somebody that means, um, it's a mutual, it's a mutual thing. That's what my twin and I have said. I won't be with you. He said, would you be with me? And I said, only if we got each other on every single level, because to me it's sacred, and I wouldn't be with you if you were with anyone else. And he agreed. So that's the way it is for me. So have you been raised to think maybe something is dirty, that's wrong? You need to examine that. I had to learn that, because if I wasn't able to masturbate, I wouldn't, I'd be pretty uptight. Do you know that people that masturbate are, are incredibly creative, <laughs> successful? because it releases endorphins and dopamine. It's amazing the things it does for your body. Your body needs that release. I do that every single day. And it's not too much information. It's healthy. It's like brushing your teeth. To me, it's that, it's like brushing my teeth. I don't go a day without that. Nope, because I deserve it. I deserve the feeling. I deserve the release. I deserve what it does for my body. It's healthy. So you need to examine why you're afraid to allow yourself to touch someone, why you're allow, afraid to allow someone to touch you or express yourself or allow anyone close to you. That's really important. Wow. All right, that's it, you guys. At one hour, I'll let you go. I love you.